Welcome, everyone, to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Medical marijuana is marijuana that is used to treat pain, nausea, and other side effects of some treatments, as well as some disease symptoms. Medical marijuana is legal now in over half the states mm. and in Washington, D.C., each state has legalized or that has legalized marijuana for medical use regulates who may use it and how the product is distributed within its borders. Recently, there's been a discussion about whether medical marijuana could be the answer to the opioid epidemic in this country. Senator Elizabeth Warren has asked the Centers for Disease Control to explore the use of medical marijuana as an alternative to the powerful opioid painkillers that result in thousands of overdose deaths that result in thousands of overdose deaths each year. So no more oxycodone. We're going with uh, marijuana. Huh? We'll find out. Well, here to discuss the use of medical marijuana is internal medicine specialist and addiction specialist, Dr. John Ebert. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Ebert. Good to have you. Pleasure to be here again. So I, I have always been under the assumption that uh, if this many states, half the states in America, have legalized marijuana, that everybody, including the medical profession, must think it's safe. So that's a really great question. Um, I, I, I think that we do need to sort of separate the issue. Um, some, of, some of what we're hearing and some of the rhetoric we're hearing is, is really about uh, recreational use, too. And so I want to be very clear about what we are talking about, what you've said. Yeah, Colorado is so different than Minnesota's situation. Right. So if you look at the four states that have legalized it for recreational use, you know, Washington, Oregon, Alaska, and Colorado, um, very different issues. So we're really focused, as, as you mentioned, Tom, on, on, on that um, the medical marijuana piece that half the states in Washington, D.C. have approved of. So once, once you get beyond that, then you really need to talk about what exactly is the drug we're talking about. We mentioned med medical marijuana, but we're really talking about really two genus um, um, or species of cannabis, and one is cannabis sativa and one is cannabis indica, and those are the two main strains. When we talk about marijuana, it's complex because there's over 400 chemicals in, mer in, in medical cannabis, and 70 of them are cannabinoids. Most medications that we prescribe in medical practice have no more than two medications, if you think about a combination, mm -hmm. blood pressure medication, for example. Um, but these have over 70 cannabinoids in them, and all of them, and th there are different cannabinoids, and they have different effects. So you're saying that medical marijuana is different than recreational marijuana? Yeah, So and, and it's really important to have that clear distinction because the the rhetoric does sort of get confused and i think that when you look at the the way that um certain physicians are actually interested mm -hmm. in engaging in a conversation about the use of marijuana as an alternative uh, for pain control um, they are not endorsing marijuana to be used recreationally it's for a very specific patient for a very specific problem but the federal government won't even allow any testing whatsoever on any, whether the recreational angle or the medicinal angle. That is, that has to change first, right? So there are some clinical trials going on. Okay. And, um, but one of the things that is really challenging about conducting those clinical trials is the amount of regulatory oversight and the number of regulatory hoops you need to go through. For example, if I were to do a study looking at medical cannabis for spasticity, which is one of the proven indications um, or one of the proven uh, positive benefits is it can help with spasticity. So patients have uh, usually have a cervical cord injury or multiple sclerosis, they can get spasticity. And, and it seems that medical cannabis helps for that. If I wanted to do a study on that, I would first need to go to the FDA. Then I would need to go um, to the NIH, um, and they would give me the drug, um, specifically through NIDA, and then I'd have to go through the DEA. So if you think about those regulatory hurdles, and be approved by our IRB, it's people are doing these studies, though, and they are going on. So uh, if someone is going to use uh, marijuana for uh, medical purposes, do they need a prescription to, to get it? That's a great question, Tom. So the way that um, we've set a lot of the states up um, is that because it's illegal under federal law, 
it's a Schedule One medication. So it is illegal to to give or recommend that drug for use in a patient. The way that they've set it up in Minnesota, for example, is physicians who are interested in having their patients explore medical cannabis for a therapeutic indication, they don't prescribe it. The physicians don't prescribe it. They certify a qualifying condition. And in Minnesota, those certification, those qualifying conditions are things like HIV, cancer, uh, terminal illness, and now as of July 1st, cr- July 1st chronic pain. Do you and think that's enforced, though? Uh, do you think, I, I think, I bet that I could walk off this in, in, into one of these places where they sell medical marijuana and get it, even without your... Have you tried that, Dr. Yes, you know, but I will we, <laughs> for we, the next show. We have one in town, and you yeah. can you can test the theory um, directly. And um, but they but when you go there, and I've had patients who have gone there and told me the story. Uh, they go there, they sit down with the pharmacist, and they have a pharmacist oh, okay. that actually well, works in there. Um, and they um, and it is a dispensary, but they have to have. And it's in the program in Minnesota, they have to have clearance and approval, and they have to be certified, and there is a, a fee that they have to pay in order to participate. I think I'll try it in California okay. before I try it here. <laughs> How safe is it compared to med- to uh, o- this opioid crisis that we're having? So if hands? you look at the number of patients that died last year um, from opioids, 28,000, um, and, then, and then you hear the statistics of the number of, patient, the number of patients that have died from medical marijuana, um, this is zero. So, um, but, you know, you need to look harder at those numbers, too. I think it's a little bit um, challenging to to get information about illicit drugs. I mean, uh, opioids, at least the non-illicit types or the, the ones that are not on street drugs, uh, those actually have, you know, they're, they're prescribed by physicians. They're easier to track. It's much, it's much more challenging to get statistics and important vital statistics about um, drugs that are illegal because patients may not be forthcoming or, or users might not be forthcoming about their use. One final question. Can you yeah. get addicted to marijuana, whether you, you're, you're using it for medical purposes or otherwise? Great question. And I, when you look at the data, there about 10% of chronic users have some form of dependence. And the dependence we typically define as um, having withdrawal from it when you stop it. And you see about 9 to 10% of chronic users actually having a dependence on it. All right. All about medical marijuana from someone who knows, internist and addiction specialist, Dr. John Ebert. Good to have you back. Thanks.